All right, Sultai, Sultai Vanifier. Um, Vanifier, also referred to as Pod Mom or the Fairy Pod Mother because she has the ability of Birthing Pod, which is an old card that was once popular in modern. Um, just kind of traditional Sultai good stuff package. We've got the Wild Growth Walker stuff. Notably, we're only playing three Branch Walkers, but because we have Prime Speaker Vanifier, we're able to find our Explorer creatures pretty consistently. Um, Sweet of Hostage Takers and Chupacabra is also some Golgari Fine Brokers as a value 4 drop. Under Realm Lich, Biogenic Use with a Carney T at the top end. One card that, card that I'm a little bit suspect on here is Charnel Troll. If any of your upkeep, exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on this, otherwise sacrifice it. I think this card's a little bit hard to enable. The original deck submission for this actually had three copies of this card in it, and I think that's way too many. We'll, I'm going to leave the one around to see if it's worth potting into, but like, it's really awkward. This is like a three drop that you can't play on three most of the time, so I think having three of them is not ideal. Let's go ahead. We actually got all the way into Mythic this season, just playing viewer submitted decks and archetypes, which is really sweet. So let's go ahead and dive on into the ladder and see how it goes. Opponent Mulligan. I'm gonna keep this. Any any black or green source in the first first three draws, and we're good to go. Land War Elves is also an excellent rip. Like turn 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 one Land War Elves the draw would be absurd. Just go Elf into Jade Light and to hit our black sources and be on our be on our merry way. How far do you drop when the new season comes out? You. Sorry, you drop uh, you drop two ranks. So if you're if you're mythic, you drop back down to platinum. I did not see a change log for the update that happened. Yikes! This is not a not a good start for our hero. Second second bit reaper also not fantastic. Neither of those are the lands I wanted for Christmas. They have like, if they have a way to take the Jade Light Ranger out of play here, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. If they don't have a way to kill a Jade Light, having a 4-3 on this board is like, not the Stone Cold brought worst. How many lands are we running? I think there's like 23. Combo decks in standard that don't use Wilderness Reclamation. Not ones that are good. The beatings will continue until the morale improves. Yikes. All right, we're going to have to revisit this sideboard after this... Uh, after this game, I think the sideboard does not really have cards for the aggro matchup. There's no, there's no moment of cravings. There's no nothing. Is there a land in the sideboard? Did I click on that by mistake? Is there a land in the sideboard? Did I miss that? I looked at, I looked at this deck last night. Was there an overgrown tomb in the sideboard that I missed? Did I misclick it? I must have misclicked it. Yeah, I misclicked it. Yeah, I definitely, in my experience, like working with viewer submissions, I think that's definitely something that's very true. People people tend to not respect the aggro decks enough. And I think that's a psychological thing more than anything. Because, like, the control decks 
feel miserable to lose to because you lose long grindy games against control and it feels bad for a long time. Whereas aggro, like that game we just lost there, right? Like even though we lost, it was quick and brutal and it doesn't feel bad from an emotional perspective. Oh, that's true. That's true. The party bus is technically a combo deck. That's my answer. Esper, Esper bus. I always forget that that's a combo deck. That, that deck's like a mid-range deck first and a combo deck second. It's not a dedicated combo deck. All right, I'm going to keep this and get my elf shocked and cry myself to sleep, but this hand's definitely keep. The good news on the Basic Forest Pelt Collector here implies that my opponent is not a uh, is not a Goblin Chain Whirler deck. So that's nice. Huh. So they, they didn't have a removal spell for my wild growth walker. Do I want a hostage taker here? I probably just want to I probably just want a branch walker. I think I just want to do this. It's not super mana efficient. I think if I would have had the second black source already, I would have chupacabra. But I don't really want a hostage shaker and then, like, get it killed and have them get their thing back. Dangerous and yarned. Thanks for the two months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Dangerous and yarned. Um... They haven't had removal so far, right? I think I think I just play Prime Speaker Vanifier. Cause like if I if I kill this, this turns into a 4-4. And this way, if they don't kill Prime Speaker Vanifier or my Branch Walker, I get to get a Jade Light Ranger next turn, which is excellent. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump block here. They have a Collision Colossus they're thinking of burning. What if they have like a Lightning Strike or a Shock here? That's the reason I didn't. I didn't block the Wild Growth Walker to the Pulp Collectors. I wanted to play around Lightning Strike and Shock. Well, that's just a Jade Light Ranger naturally, so I guess we'll do that. I think I'll leave that in the library for now. I'm going to pod this into a Hostage Taker. Take their 3-3 Pell Collector. I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack with this because I don't, I don't think I'm in a blocking mood because I'm pretty sure they have Collision Colossus based on their pause last turn. I think I just want to keep that in place so I can keep gaining life with it. It's going to run the no blocks here. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like we're in a good spot. Wild Growth Walker is really good here and Vanifier is just like a turbo, turbo Wild Growth Walker basically. Huh? 
I think I'm just gonna turn this into a branch walker to start. And then I think I'm gonna hostage take her this rekindling phoenix. And then I think my plan for this turn is block, double block. My, my wild growth walker's done enough here. My opponent concurs the wild growth walker's done enough. I guess I probably want the Vraska's Contempt in my deck, huh? Another one of those. Oh, it's already in my deck. These Midnight Reapers are really not that good. None of the other cards in my sideboard are good, though. I guess Disdainful Stroke could be okay. It seems hard to hold up, though. All right. this to find some black lands for us. How did robots go? We went four and one. Experimental Frenzy wasn't particularly good, but the deck itself was great. All right, well. The way our hand shaped up here is if we draw even a non-black land next turn, we get to get Biogenicus down. As long as our opponent's missing on red band, I think we're favored here. I think there's a chance this just eats a shock or a lightning strike here, but I'm definitely just spending my mana. I like get a 2-2 out of it at least. It clears, clears the lightning strike for if I draw a black source so I can hostage take or something. Yeah, yeah, I think there were some good games of magic in the affinity matches. All right, so who's gonna, who's gonna hit first? Are they, are we gonna hit black or are they going to hit, uh, are they going to hit their second red to unlock their phoenixes and stuff? We both kept kind of mediocre hands, but like, I just needed to draw one black source and I had two looks with Jade Light. Like, we've obviously missed here. So, we are 14 cards into our deck without a black source. How many black sources are in this mana base? Oh, good lord. Nah. We're going to take a peek at our mana after this game. Our mana, the mana base in this deck is not good. I did not. Listen, if you're submitting decks to the stream, please become familiar with this article here. Thankfully, our opponent's incredibly unlucky. Or kept a bad hand, one of the two. Maybe both. We're, we're definitely not really suffering from variance so much as we're suffering from bad deck building here. We're gonna take a peek at not only readjusting the sideboard for the aggro matchup, but also making the mana base more reasonable. Not surprised to see that die. Like, their hand is probably just a bunch of removal because they haven't been doing anything. Legion War Boss doesn't really do anything on this board, thankfully. Yeah, there's, only, there's only 11 black sources. Like, four, 14's kind of the floor. 
And if you want to play black, black cards, you need more than 14. We did it. Okie doke. I think we're actually ahead because they flooded out here. Like they, they kept a pretty reactive hand. All right, Growth Chamber Guardian turns things around really quickly. And this is, this is why Growth Chamber Guardian is really good is because it's a card that allows you to use all your mana when you flood it out here. It's a card that's good on two, that's also good on 12. That's probably the best draw in their deck at this point. Because like even a Phoenix or a Dragon, I would have been able to hostage take her. That's another non-black land. Um, this takes black mana to activate too. Got plenty of creatures in here. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm just playing this out as a 4-4. I think I just do this. I don't, I don't want to trade my troll because my troll is going to turn into a 5-5 five five next turn. I think I'm low enough that trading my elf for 4 health was worthwhile there. Troll does have plenty of food here, which is nice. Um, so I've got... Second black is great here. I've got five, six, seven. This is eight mana. I think I'm going to Hostage Taker, a Growth Chamber Guardian, play the Growth Chamber Guardian, play Reassembling Skeleton. I, I have nine with the Elf, technically. Hey, Bob. Howdy, howdy. Profit gains life, but the problem with playing Profit this turn is it can't block, and it it can't it can't block, and it doesn't. Um, it makes it means I can only play one spell this turn. I think it's pretty important that I play two spells this turn. Or in this case, three with the hostage taker. The problem with burning the hostage taker is like now I'm super soft to like a phoenix off the top. Like that was kind of my insurance plan, but I was too far behind on board to like be waiting on that still. So I have to hope they like draw some more blanks. And they've already drawn a lot of blanks, so like hoping for that plan is like not ideal. Well, their deck is also full of things like pelt collectors, so there's that. Yeah. Wonder how aggressive they're gonna get here. The Phoenix might might let them lessen up on being aggressive just because like they have me in the air now. Nope. Here they come. So if I do this, I'm going to keep this, this, this. And I'm going to take four on this combat. And they're going to lose this, 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 and this. Midnight Reaper again, just looking super rancid. Wish I would have had a removal spell on my sideboard that I could have traded that out for. I think, I think these are my best blocks. This lets me play Twilight Prophet. 
plus Fart Growth Chamber Guardian next turn. This being a 2-4 means I get to block this profitably, which is nice. They have a lot, they have a bunch of draws that kill me here. But if we hit if we hit another blank, we're we're good to go. They draw lava coil. That'd be bad. We're dead to collision colossus and uh lightning strike, because I'm not blocking here. Uh there aren't growth chamber guardians in my deck. This is their growth chamber guardian. Uh, I'm technically not dead to that. So I get to go eat, trade, bounce, jump, go to, go to two. I have to hope to hit, hope to hit a good one here. Hope to two good ones. If I hit if I hit a good double spell turn, we could be we could be in a great spot. Needed that. Needed that to gain me life. If this if those had been in the opposite order, we'd have been in such a good spot here. God, if these had just been in the opposite order. I can't, I can't play Midnight Reaper, right? It doesn't do, it's not good enough. Hey, I die. Because two of, two of my creatures will die in combat. You have to just pass. If this would have just put me above not having to chump block this, we'd have been okay. Skeleton comes into play tapped. So it doesn't do anything meaningful here. It does get to pod later, but... <coughs> I agree. Tireless Tracker is wonderful. Yep. Yeah, like I said, if these two cards had just been in different spots, we'd have... Yep. Do I want to discard this? I don't think I do, actually. I don't, actually. Oh, all my hostage takers are gone, too. Yeah, I was going to get hostage taker, but they're all gone. All, all three of them are in here. I have, I have fine broker. Yeah, I'm trying to do math here. Yeah, there's no deputy of detention in this build. So I have four, eight, nine, ten mana. So I could turn this into fine broker, pick up the hostage taker, hostage taker to bird, play the bird. Yeah, that's, that's the line. Does that leave me dead on board though? That might leave me dead. I don't actually know.
Yeah, we're, we're going to be blocking, though. So. I can't, I can't get dual hostage takers. There's no hostage takers in my deck. I have to go get fine broker, pick up hostage taker, play hostage taker. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the mirror, the mirror image. Yeah, huh. So the problem with that is um, I then have to, I have to block these Grull spell breakers or I die because they have trample. So if I, if I mirror image to make a second hostage taker, I just die. Like I'll, I'll have to jump block next turn. I think I think I'm obligated to do this. Mirror image only copies creatures you control. It's not clone. It's three mana copy your thing. You can just like, hoping for another blank because I can't beat anything. Including, including that. Yep. And again, like, this game feels close. But this game is such a great example of how bad deck building lost us the match. So, we lost this match for a couple of reasons. For the, for the two primary reasons were, one, this deck as built, I actually added more respect for aggro and it still wasn't enough. So if these Midnight Reapers in my deck had been cards with text boxes in that matchup, as opposed to a card I literally couldn't play because I was just dead if I cast it, um, I, I would have been in that game because I just needed one more removal spell. If my mana base had a reasonable number of black sources in it, I would have been in that game because I would have been able to... Um, I would have been able to cast my spells sooner and like start leveraging my advantage before my health total was too low. So there were a couple, couple of reasons why that ended up not working out in our favor. Let's, uh, let's try and address some of those now by making some changes to the deck. All right. So this is black source number 12. Okay, I'm going to cut a couple of hinterland harbors. I think Muldrotha is a clunky win more card. I think anytime you're winning with Muldrotha, you're probably winning the game anyways. I mean, like, at the core, the deck is, like, a bunch of playable magic cards. I mean, it didn't, it didn't even prioritize blue, right? Like this deck, this mana base has both low blue and black counts. It's just got too much green mana in it. So like even after cutting two green sources, I still have 12, 14, 17 green. I didn't cut blue sources. I just turned, I turned other colors into things. The mana base had 12 blue to start, which probably isn't enough to support Frill Mystic. You're right. I added, I added black sources by cutting green. What's my favorite Vanifier shell? In standard, probably Teamer, followed closely by Bant, from what I've played so far. Yeah, 17 is fine for Jade Light. We also have Land War Elves, which helps cast Jade Light also. Like with a number of double black cards, I think getting up to 14 black is probably good. I mean, like, you can flight forward. It's strictly worse. I don't I don't know what you like. I don't have I don't have a mathematical quantifier for how much worse it is or like how often it's gonna lose you a game, but yes, it's going to lose you games. Obviously, for budget reasons, you can do it. Like it's better than not playing the deck, probably, but it is worse. And in a, in a way, like that last match that we played there, like that game three, where we got to like see in action how our deck building choices directly cost 
directly cost us winning a match like those games are more valuable than games that we win a lot of the time as when it comes to like looking at a deck and thinking about what it's doing and changes we want to possibly be making Fifteen months. Thank you, Animon, for the prime support. I appreciate that. And Mion. And Mion. And Mion. I might remember that. Maybe. For people that are suggesting cards for this deck, don't just say, would this card be good? And, and, and expect me to validate your idea. Instead, sell me on it. Put some effort into your thoughts. Say, Jeff, this card solves this problem that this deck has, and this is something that we could replace for it. The best way to approach tuning decks is, again, thinking about this is the problem we have, this is how I'm addressing that problem with the change I'm trying to make. Magic's a game where there's infinite cards almost, there's tons of combinations of all these cards, and you can't just, like, put cards in at random, because if you do that, you're always going to be changing cards at random. You, you want to have a goal for the changes that you're making. So again, Mega, listen to the words I just said. What you, you said, let's replace this. And you told me what Maldrotha does. You told me the text box of the card, but you didn't tell me what it does for the deck. What problem do I have that's being solved by adding Maldrotha to my deck? That's, that's the question you want to be asking yourself. Be, be problem solution based. This is a problem you have. This is how you're solving it by making a change. Spy Joe, thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I think I want to just grab Underrealm Lich here. I don't actually, now I'm going to grab Biogenic Goose. It kills faster. I don't actually know that Underrealm Lich is good in this archetype. Just because, like, binning our random one-ofs that we want to be potting into seems kind of loose. Well, we get to go on a safari this turn. We get to go wild growth walker into branch walker into pod... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that is pretty good just generic life advice, right, Troll? Pro be problem solution based. This is an issue. This is how you're trying to solve it. Uh, I think I'm going to draw towards more lands here. Hostage taker sounds great. So it looked like they were some kind of teamer reclamation deck to start, but now that looks to not be the case. Let me just give them Lava Coil. It looks like they're just like teamer mid-range. Yeah, Pod Bomb is an ooze. All right, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to Jade Light to try and hit my land drop. Uh, the 1-1 one, one counters on Vanifier came from the Biogenic Ooze because Vanifier is a... is a Ooze. I'm gonna Hostage Shaker Hydrate Crisis here. That'll... that should bait their Lava Coil here. So I can trade one of my four power creatures for their Karn here, basically, which seems like a good trade for me. So like they get to they get to eat my four four with their Phoenix, but their Karn their Karn dies. That's so a good good swap for us overall. There is always another fight. 
There's always another fight. Really? They're leaving me the Hydra increases? Deal? Karn is such a drama queen. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're pretty far behind at this point. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Their decision to axe my 4-4 seems like a good one. Trophy seems good. Vivian seems fine. Probably going to grind here a little bit. I'm not sure that I like Underrum Lich in this deck. Honestly, I might just want a second Biogenic Ooze. The more I, the more I think about what we have going on here. What do we, what do we want to trim here? Reclamation Stage doesn't seem particularly good. Didn't see any enchantments out of them. Uh, Chupacabra is probably not that great. I think Lich is there to fuel Troll. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The Troll The troll seems kind of mediocre, too. I think just slotting the fourth Branch Walker in is probably fine. Yeah. Like, having having a second used to go get in some matchups is definitely something we're interested in doing. Would Gutter Bones be a good addition to the deck? The reason I'm suggesting it, it is quick play that we can pot into Wild Growth Walker and Branch Walker, plus it's a recurring threat against slower decks. I don't... I don't know. I feel like we aren't going to be getting it back that often because, like, in order to get Gutter Bones back, um, you have to be attacking a little bit. We're not always attacking. And, and again, like, I think this deck has a lot of good tools against slower decks. So while I agree that Gutter Bones does what you're saying it does there, I, again, I don't think you're addressing a problem that we have. Like, if anything, I think this deck is probably decent against the slower decks and needs help against the faster decks. So I don't, I don't think it's this deck has this problem and we're fixing it by making this change. I think it needs blue mana, but we've got an explorer, so it's fine. Do you have any shell where you like Lich? Not really. I think, I think Lich kind of just gets outclassed by most other things in this format. There's, a, there's enough exile removal lurking around that it's not super resilient against uh, against control decks where it would be good. Thanks, Wolfie. Yeah, the opponent actually has their Twitch URL for their username, which is kind of funny. It's sweet that you could do that on Arena. Re-upping support from YouTube Watcher. Thanks for the great work. Thank you for the 12 months of Prime, Lego. I really appreciate the people that poke in from... From YouTube on occasion to support that Twitch Prime uh, pays my bills. So if you're if you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free, and it gives you a sub every single month at no cost to yourself. I mean, double shocking the wild growth in response, sure. Problem deck isn't expensive enough. I'd agree with that. We can always always make it cost more dollars. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Jane Warler's pretty good here. Puts up a solid brick wall against uh against our Jade Lights. Even even a 4-3 can't attack into this. Yeah, they're playing like teamer, whirler, mid-range. It's interesting. Yep. I'm just going to play Vivian and start shipping her up here. Uh, they have the Simic Sleeves. I'm going to take Wild Growth here, and then next turn I can go Wild Growth into Mirror Image on a Jade Light Ranger.
Did I just let Vivian eat it here? I think I just let Vivian eat it and then race them. Wow, look at this non-foil, this non-foil mirror image Jade Light Ranger. Makes me want to vomit. Yeah, I like the, I like the love tap in the air there. These things keep the ground pretty locked up. She's doing her best with what she's got, right? Cut my chupacabras. Awkward. They showed us Banefire game one, which is something I kind of need to be conscious of here. I still have Jade Lights in my deck, right? I think I want to just make sure I don't die to Banefire by mistake. I think, I think my plan here is pod Jade Light into um, the uh, pick under the thing that picks the card back up from my discard pile and then replay it game 12. Fine broker, that's the card. It's on the, it's on the tip of my tongue. Well. That was an that was an uh, interesting interesting prompt. Big dumb dinos. Bum ba -da bum 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 bum. Love tap, baby love tap, baby baby love tap. Do 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 do. They have a they have another they have another star of extinction here. Good golly. Hey, double lethal threat. Go.
Almost to three years. Tier three this month is a wild card for a League of Your Choice post-war release. Thank you, Punt Count, for not only the length of sport, but also the tier three. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Bye 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 No more, no more stars. Yeah, please, please stop. Please stop. All right. I think I'm going to cut the Underrealm Lich and get another ooze in here. I also think this Charnel Troll is probably silly. I just want to round out the Explore package. It's just like a core of good cards at this point, basically. Ooze doesn't have a foil. It does have a foil. We just haven't, haven't purchased it. Contrary, contrary to what some people think, I don't have all the foils. I just have the ones people have sent in for. It'll be refreshing when the explore package rotates. Things will open up. Inc incubation Druid plus uh, plus Growth Chamber Grid. It'll become the staple green green two drops most likely. Yeah, probably new Vivian. I have my article up from last week talking about the first round of spoilers. Once we once we get a full set of spoilers through, I'll probably do a. These are I'll probably do a, a write up of everything I like so far. <sighs> Think I'm supposed to mulligan this in the dark. Yeah, let's just draw Branch Walker. Opponent went to five. This is the part where they like are super aggressive and just kill us, right? All right, it's something to do before four at least. Dude Light, thanks for the tip. Someone said we were missing a foil card. Let's fix that. <laughs> Sounds good. I think I ran out of wit at month nine or 10. Thank you for the 12 months of Prime Confusion. Have a sword to go with your shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, yeah, the format will completely change when rotation happens. And the, and the nice thing about the new non-rotating format is that people who love the current standard form will be able to keep playing it in a similar iteration when things rotate. Please don't lava coil this. Just kill it, let me draw a card. Land. All right, I mean, like, that's like land adjacent, right? Land. I think I have to bin that. I think I, I think I just need to need to hit some actual. Please clarry on me and let me draw two cards. It's unfortunate. Red Mulligan, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Worth worth noting, I did cut a green source for these drowned catacombs. So, like, I guess I cut an island for one, too. So, this could have been the island. Meh. Missed a couple of months somewhere, but it's my monthly support from a primary YouTube viewer. Unlimited data is not letting me listen to your streams. It works. Awesome, Full Metal. Thank you for the half a year. Welcome back. We appreciate you keeping me around. I think I find Broker here and pick my elf back up. Sure. No, the unsets are never, never contracted legal. So Tefri is gonna be gonna be a distraction here. I guess they could have seal away. If they have seal away, their Tefri gets to live. They hadn't played that out just yet. Uh, I think I just get Vanifier down. Been housebound for five weeks after my liver donation surgery. You're helping me stay sane. Glad to be here, Durhulk. 
Hope you get well soon. A lot of hostage shakers. We try to kill them here, right? Yeah, probably. I think I just played this because it's a threat that survives Deafening Clarion. Although I guess if they have Deafening Clarion, they just like Clarion and then tuck with Tefri. So maybe I'm just supposed to like go wide. Bottoms up is good for us. Put a mulligan to low to start this game, but we, we stumbled. Yeah, that's the other thought. It's like, how badly do I want to play around Clarion? You know what? I'm not done yet. Oh, I could hostage shaker my own creature. That's a funny suggestion. That's probably a good idea, actually. I think I think I like that idea. Although I guess if they Clarion, they still just like Clarion and then tuck the thing that comes back. It's kind of like rock in a hard place, regardless. All right, so I'm going to cut the Hostage Takers. I'm going to leave one Chupacabra in my deck because I think there's a chance that my opponent has, like, niv it or something like that. So I want to be able to get rid of that. Um, Reclamation Stage doesn't seem particularly good. Branch Walk or Wild Growth Walker seems unnecessary. Or Lyra, yeah. Trim and Elf here. Maybe I don't want all these counter spells. I can see not wanting three counter spells, a lot of counters. It's also possible I like don't want all these contempts and these trophies. Maybe I'd prefer these and don't want all this expensive stuff. Let's try, let's try this. Mirror image is actually probably pretty bad. I'm gonna leave the extra dog in just because I think killing their creatures is pretty important. I'm like potting through this up to Biogenicus is fine. Lyra, Lyra and Niv are kind of scary post board. This hand, like, has our colors in it. It's not particularly aggressive, though. It's a good pickup. That is also a good draw. Absorb me, daddy. Sure. Ever kindling Phoenix? Drawing the land here is great because it means I can I can pass holding up the stainful stroke while still uh While still hitting my land drop for the turn. To play around double revitalize. Yep. Good. Good point. You're not singing today. You must not have you must not have been here for very long. There's definitely been plenty of singing today. Fantastic.
great. That draws two. When would you ever consider countering a draw spell? Um, the primary reason to counter a draw spell is when they could draw a card with their draw spell that prevents you from winning the game the following turn that your counter spell can't counter. So for instance, if you have a negate and your opponent's out is a creature, countering their draw spell makes a lot of sense. Or for example, if you have a disdainful stroke and their, their draw spell costs four or more and their out costs three or less, then countering their draw spell can make sense if you're killing on the following turn. In, in general, countering the draw spells as opposed to countering their their real payoffs like Tefri tends to not be a good idea though in my experience. But not syncopate on the first camera. It's like, yeah, maybe. It depends on the it depends on the texture of your hand. I'm like obviously magic's a super complicated game, and there aren't really hard and fast always do this, never do that rules. Or if there are people telling you that there are, those people probably aren't very good at the game and don't understand. Yeah, like there's other factors too, right? Like, are they have they missed land drops, stuff like that? There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Like, our opponents doing a good job keeping the board clean currently, but like they don't have a consistent source of card advantage. Like, we're kind of going toe to toe thanks to our midnight reapers drawing us cards. Huh. I think I'm gonna start with this. See what happens. I think I want to just get Skeleton here. Skeleton. Skeleton is, like, uniquely annoying in this matchup for my opponent. Gonna, like, start fighting Jade Light Rangers. What's a mass card advantage that way? It's a good, it's a good scene. When are we dying our hair again? I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, sit here and accrue value. This is going to come back into play. This gets to turn into a Golgari Fine Broker next turn. Yep. Yeah, it is. It is gonna be fine broker. Get fine broker. The old, the old three four eternal witness loops. I think I'm gonna fight here. Come to me. Negate the Vivian to assert dominance. Yikes! That's the diff, is it? I guess I guess I have Vivian play. Depends on depends on what their hand is, right? Depending depending on their hand, we could be in trouble here. Like Clarion gets real good here at this point. Yep. Wait, what? Did they misclick? They must have misclicked. Feel the wrath of Scala. I 
I managed to misclick that, and I thought it never happened to me. Yep. Yep. Let's play. Let's play one more. I feel like we got into a pretty okay spot. Feels like feels like we ended up in an okay spot. Pretty easy mulligan. Spells look great, but don't they always when you have six of them? Oh, adds the greatest reminder that I forgot to reset. Emulet Titan, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. I appreciate that. Easy bottom here. Just digging for a third land slash green source. Merfolk Branch Walker or some other two drop would be ideal draw to now. Does Twilight Prophet have... Oh, I forgot to make my... I forgot to make my ooze pretty. Ooze pretty. Really want a two drop here. If our first plays on three, it's probably gonna be too slow. I guess their their starts kind of kind of medium here too. So we're hoping this jade light drags us into a fourth land and also a black source. They didn't have a two mana play last turn, so they could have uh, history of Nalia, sure. Right on time, Merfolk Branch Walker. Welcome to the party. I think I just have to ship those. It is kind of nice having a 4-3 because like I can block their 2-2 profitably now, which is nice. If they have if they have some Elefantes, we could be in trouble. Alright, I'll take the free eats. They really wanted to flip this over. It's so important that they wanted to throw their knight away there. Just another history, okay. Sweet. That's a land drop. Um, who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 That one. That one's for Marty. I haven't. I haven't sang that song on stream before, so I like to. I like to mix it up and make Marty add new songs to this thing every once in a while. Easy trade here on the Jade Light Ranger. They think you're salt type mid, they're probably trying to beat Finale. That's a good point. The fact that we're playing an off meta deck has value here. Cedrix, thank you for the six months of support. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. You guys want to get Prime Speaker going? We get uh, Biogenic Ooze out next turn and start pumping out friends. We'll be good to go. <laughs> you've been you've been conditioned swift you've been you've been thoroughly conditioned we have a green splash here i wonder what the green splash is for i think i take a love tap for four on this attack here who are the heads in the banner on the hooklandia background those are various uh subscribers who have contributed uh, considerable amounts of support here, whether it be bits or donations or sub gifts or things like that. You think they're just Celestia tokens? Yeah, I guess that's fair. They could just be straight up tokens. We haven't we haven't seen a bunch of one drops out of them, but yeah, they could just be green white tokens. That's fair. It makes it makes uh, hostage shaker a, a little bit worse. Read. So, I think because they're likely playing Tristani, I'm going to play the Hostage Taker now and exile the 2-2 two -two token, saving the the other dog to, to eat a Tristani should they hit it. The fact that they hit the removal spell for the... 
for the prime speaker here puts us a little bit behind we're currently ahead on board but their board's getting guaranteed better with the first board of return whereas prime speaker was going to be our source to gaining card advantage so we're really hoping to draw like biogenic ooze or another prime speaker or something like that here dawn of hope good lord they are about to bury us in a box in the ground yikes that is incredibly good here So I get, to, I get to eat two of these tokens, but they get to pay four and draw two cards. So yeah, that's probably lights out for us. That explains why their start wasn't that aggressive though. Because like, if they're playing things like Dawn of Hope, their deck's probably a little bit slower and more grindy than the average tokens deck. Happy Casa, thanks for the three months. I appreciate the quarter of a year, welcome back. So we're keeping me around. Would love to draw Reclamation Sage here. Reclamation Sage would let me kill this, get my Prime Speaker back, and then Prime Speaker would turn Sage into Fine Broker. About well, just a Fine Broker. I guess I guess I Fine Broker into Jade Light here, just like Dig Deep. supposed to attack there huh at least definitely with this i think i was supposed to smack them for six there i think i was supposed to smack them for six there yeah ooze is a card that can that can make our board better every turn right so. yeah I, I missed six points of damage here which they're at a really high health total but we're gonna need to chunk through it eventually got a lot of cards in their hand Our, our route to victory this game, missing the six points of damage is super relevant because our route to victory likely isn't from grinding them out as much as it's going to be pressuring them off the table. Because there's there's no way we can keep up with Dawn of Hope in terms of raw cards. We need to, need to get them dead. It's a 6, 10, I have 13 power in play. So like they could have been at 25 here if I'd have played better. Lyra, rude. Glad, glad I kept my dog. I guess, I guess I'm getting kind of punished for using the Hostage Shaker aggressively since they have a Lyra here, but. Chaotic Joystick, thank you for the two-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hoping to fade another biggity bomb like Lyra. The fact that I shocked to five makes Lyra a lot scarier. Whenever you cast an enchantment draw card, you have my attention, opponent. That is, uh, that's super sweet. Six hundred eighty-eight viewers seems low for a Wednesday. Well, my tricker currently says we have twelve hundred people, so you're right. Six hundred would be super low for a Wednesday, but twelve twelve hundred is about average. That six, that six points of damage I missed is going to be a really big deal here. Alp, thanks for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Or app, app ball. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, they'd be going, they'd be going to four here. I can't, I can't afford to play around a sweeper here, so I'm just like putting all my chips on the table here. What did you get me for our anniversary? 28's not a special number, Bob. I'll get you I'll get you a nice plot of land for 36. So they have uh 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So notably they can only make uh two tokens here. They can't make a third yet. Why can't you afford to play around a sweeper? Because if I hold creatures back to try and play around a sweeper effect on, in this game state, my opponent is simply going to be able to make enough tokens that I can't actually pressure them out of the game. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you have to refresh AGH. Mobile mobile often doesn't update correctly. Do I want to trim here? 
I feel like Hostage Taker is probably a liability. Like, the odds they don't have Tristani in their 75 is, like, absurdly low, right? I brought, I brought in all the enchantment removal because they have a bunch of enchantments, so I think I definitely want that. Midnight Reaper seems fine for grinding out the longer games too. Although, one of the things with Midnight Reaper, we don't have a ton of ways to gain life, but I guess Wild Growth Walker covers that. Eh, anyway, it's Twilight Prophet too. It's probably fine. I need one more cut here. I don't think Moment of Craving is good enough. I guess it kills the Seder Enchanter, but I don't know that I, what I want to cut. I think I'd rather just have all my threats. Maybe Carnage of Tyrants is just too expensive for the top end. Biogenic Grease is probably as big as I need to go. Now, I actually think Skeleton's pretty good here because my opponent's deck likely doesn't have that much removal in it. So, like, if I get Vanifier down, Vanifier with Skeleton, like, turbos out Reclamation Sages, which is nice. Opponent's deck doesn't seem particularly aggressive, so keeping a, keeping a slow hand like this seems fine. It's, it's always, it always is just like, it depends, Mike. A lot of it, a lot of it, there's just no substitute for experience. There isn't a, there isn't a hard and fast rule of, at this point, you can't play around these things. Or like, these things show you can't play around these things. Is it just win more in shells that have high value? No, I don't think so. I think having a way to like draw extra cards seems fine, especially attached to a creature body. I guess one of the best ways to think about can I beat this thing is ask yourself the question is if they don't have that thing, are you winning the game? So basically when you can, aff you can afford to play around things when you're winning the game, if you play around it, but if you're not winning the game when you play around it, you're punting the game by choosing to play around something that you can't beat without playing into that thing. Is the is like the TLDR, if if that followed. Kind of wish I would have hit the land for the Vivian, but it seems like we're in a pretty good spot here, regardless. Our card quality just gonna pull us through here. I think I'm just gonna Vivian. So like, I kind of want a Jade Light Ranger here to like buffer my health total up, but at the same time, um, at the same time, if I Vivian this turn, it uses all my mana, and then next turn I can Jade Light Ranger twice, most likely. So it's more, it's far more mana efficient to do it this way, and my opponent's like not super pressuring me this turn, which is fine. Why not kill their Legion's Landing? Why do I care about their Legion's Landing? What is, what is Legion's Landing doing that's meaningful? Like, like if anything, Legion's Landing is making them make an attack like this, which is just like, good for me. Like, Legion, like, sure, they flipped their Legion's Landing, but they threw their board away, so it's like, did this, did, did it, did it, does it really matter? Why, why would I need a sweeper in the sideboard? What problem does this deck have that you're solving by adding a sweeper to it? Balance comes. Oh, I should have grabbed the Woodland Cemetery. Whatever, it really doesn't matter. Mind me. History finale is going to pop off this turn. 
pretty firmly in the driver's seat here. I don't think so, Polly, because, like, that means if, like, the Jade Light puts a creature on top of my deck that I want to keep there, the Vivian then has to go past it if it misses on a land. So, so you're positing you think the Tokens deck's a bad matchup for us then, Pop? Why do you think the Tokens deck is a bad matchup? Why do you, why do you think the Tokens deck is something that we need extra help in? Would be, would be my question. Like, on, on paper, it feels like against the Tokens decks, I can do what I'm doing here, which is just, like, creating a board that gets gummed up while, while buffering my health total with Wild Grove Walker, and then eventually, I hit Prime Speaker Vanifier, which allows me to take over the game with something like Biogenic Ooze, or, like, literally going over the top with something like the, uh, the Vampire that draws us extra cards. So again, there's lots of cards we could add to these decks that serve specific functions. And like those functions are neat, but ultimately when you want to think about is a card worthwhile to add to your deck, you want to ask yourself the question, does my deck have an issue and how is that issue being solved by this card addition that I'm adding? Yeah, Vivian, Vivian Emblem is another way that we can break, break board parity and get ahead. Again, there's so, there's so many cards that you can add, especially in these three color decks in standard, that if you are just like adding cards at random because they seem sweet, you're always going to be making changes. And when you're tuning a deck, you want to be asking yourself, this is my problem. How do I solve it? All right, let's, uh, let's make this pretty. We had someone donate for that. It is, it is pretty, pretty. This is, this is going to be a well-spent foil. We're going to use this one a lot in the upcoming, upcoming seasons, it feels like. Anywho, all things considered on this, I don't, I don't know how I felt about the black card specifically. One thing worth noting is that Find Broker specifically was neat. Being able to pod the three into Find Broker and like pick the three back up was neat on a couple of occasions. I think I, I kind of felt like I missed like Deputy of Detention and like Rekindling Phoenix. So I don't, I don't know if necessarily the black cards are worth playing over over the red cards yeah chupacabra did some work too that being said like rekindling phoenix is also kind of absurd with prime speaker now massacre girl is interesting so like massacre girl's like this creature sweeper that you can search up with prime speaker but at the same time with that it's probably going to kill your board including the prime speaker when you pot it out so it's like well, six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Like, that would be like a one of sweeper we could play. But if we have Vanifer active, do we need to search for a sweeper? Yeah, that's that's a good comparison. This deck played out very similar to Soul Time Midrange, but we have a different payoff as opposed to Hydroid Crisis and Fine Finality. So basically the question we have to ask ourselves, like, is making our payoff susceptible to removal worth that? And I'm, I'm not sure that it is overall. But it's definitely a neat take. We won more matches than we lost. It felt like the place we ended up at was reasonable once we cut some of the kind of cute one-ofs and, like, fixed the mana base up especially. The mana base was kind of rough when we started. All right, what are we doing next? We got some Jund mid-range up next. Hey, Vx, thank you for the four-month resub. 